Now, some of my earlier videos, you've seen me make a banana wine and you've seen me make a strawberry wine. This video, we're going to be making a banana strawberry wine. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now, before I begin, I want to give a repeated special shout out to David Liebman and Claudia Bell. Uh, I gave them a shout out during the pair live stream, but because I couldn't get the uh, text of their names to appear on screen, still working on that out, I thought I'd give them another repeat shout out in this video. David, Claudia, thank you. Now to make our strawberry wine, we are going to be using the following. We're going to be using three pounds of fresh strawberries. You can use frozen. It doesn't matter. It works either way. Three pounds of ripe bananas. These are still have a little greenish tins on the skin. I wish I could let them sit a little longer, but I can't let that stop the show. Up to about two cups of sugar. Enough to bring our AVB up to at least 1.080. Juice of half a lemon. Red, uh, I'm sorry, uh, wine yeast. I'm using Premier Rouge, Red Star Premier Rouge for this particular batch. And I will probably be using a peptic enzyme on this one as well. If you don't have a peptic enzyme, don't worry about it. It just helps clear that pectin haze that, that occurs, especially when you're dealing with fruits like strawberries. A couple of straining bags, because we're gonna be using bags this time around with fresh fruit. Again, up to about a gallon of water, a wide mouth fermenter, something that's got a good wide mouth where you can put in your straining bags and more importantly, take them out. You're going to be needing a secondary fermenter, cardboard, jug, demijohn, take your pick, airlock with stopper. I'm going to be using a hydrometer. And before I do anything else, everything is going to be sanitized and my method of choice currently is using star sand. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this wine. Now, since we're using fresh fruit, one of the first things we need to do is that we need to either wash or rinse these berries off. And you can either rinse them now or you can remove the foliage first. To do it. I think I'm going to remove the foliage from the onset and while I'm at it some of the stem portions of it and then I'm going to rinse them and then I'm going to chop them up. All right. That is that. Now what I need to do is give these berries a good rinse. Cold water. And go ahead and start chopping these up into uh, quarters is good enough because at the end of at the end of primary fermentation you really are going to end up with just a a pulpy mass that will in no way resemble a strawberry or later on these bananas. So again, you can just go ahead and just roughly cut them in quarters. However you want to do it is fine. All right, good enough. Now all I need to do Start work on the bananas. Now with the bananas, there are a couple of ways that you can go with this. If you're not planning on using the skins, then you can go ahead and peel your bananas, slice them up, and uh, get them ready for the straining bag. If you are going to use the skins, again, a couple of ways you can do it. One, you can either peel the bananas, slice them up, and then put the peel in with the straining bag, or you can do what I'm going to do, and that's simply slice them up, skins on. Actually, you'll find out that it's easier to slice that way. But before I do any of that, what I want to do, since I'm going to be using the skins, is to go ahead and give the bananas a good rinse. Now again, with your bananas, 
I mean, the riper, the better. If you got brown speckles, I mean, that's perfectly fine. These, I wish I could have let aged a little bit longer, but I'm running out of time and I don't, I can't do it. So again, the riper, the banana, the sweeter, the banana, the less sugar you're going to have to add to the final mix to get your gravity reading up to where you want it. So let's go ahead and give these bananas a good rinse. All right, next thing is to do the slicing. And I think I'm going to use which knife? This one. All right, let's go ahead and grab a banana. And I generally will tend to slice off the ends, is not being necessary to the process. And just go ahead and slice them up. Oh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. Should do it. Now along the way, if you should happen to see some yucky parts intruding on your banana, just go ahead and just cut those away. I mean, this is your wine and you want the best ingredients you can possibly put in it. So that having been said, that's one. Hope all this is going to fit in the straining bags, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap and finish up the rest of bananas and then we'll, we'll press on. All right. I think that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and uh, add those to our bowl. Don't do this anymore. All right, what we want to do next is we want to, since we are not using Camden tablets, we're going to use the boil water method. So I'm going to go ahead and take that one gallon of water that we set aside. I'm going to go ahead and bring that up to a boil. And while that's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and begin putting the fruit into my straining bags. And that process is going to look a whole lot like this. I mean, yeah, I could just use my hand and scoop them all in there, but I'm not. I probably will in the end, but just go ahead and get your berries in the bags. All right, I had three one gallon straining bags. And I've got enough room to tie them all off. So three pounds of fruit, six pounds of fruit, fits just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie these off. And I'm still waiting on my water to do its thing. All right, with our water, which by the way, is filtered water, but you could use uh, your water of choice as long as it's clean. Let's come to a boil. We're just gonna go ahead and Turn off the heat and start putting in our fruit. I mean, we really don't want to cook the fruit. We just want to try and kill off as much stray yeast, wild yeast, and as much any harmful bacteria as we possibly can. Also, if we proceed to cook the fruit, we're just going to increase the amount of pectin that we're going to we're going to have and we really don't need that. So all we need to do at this point is just let it come down to room temperature. Okay, now that our banana strawberry mixture has come to room uh, temperature, we're going to go ahead and put this in our primary fermenter. Starting with the bags of fruit. 
This is not going to be pretty, but it is going to go in there. And the easy part of trying to pour this in without pouring it all over the place. All right. Now with that being done, all I need to do, well, a couple of things. If you are using a peptic enzyme, this would be the time to do it. Or Camden tablets, again, this would have been the time to do it. Since I'm only gonna be using pectic enzyme, it's only because I don't wanna wait forever for the pectic haze to clear up. Again, if you don't have it, don't worry about it. Time will be on your side. I'm just gonna go ahead and add my enzyme. It's the only only cheat that I, I have for not being as natural as I can get it. And let's go ahead and give that a little swirl to incorporate. And while we're at it, this would be a good time to put in the juice of our half a lemon. And the lemon juice, of course, is acting as our acid blend substitute to give our wine a little bit of acidity. If you're heavy into tannins, you can uh, add tannin powder or the tea bag method that you've seen me use in some of my earlier videos. Or you can simply add oak chips later on during secondary fermentation. But it takes 12 hours for the peptic enzyme to do its little thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna put it on the counter in the meantime, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it its 12 hours and then we're gonna add the magic ingredient to turn our banana, pine, banana, banana strawberry juice into wine. Now, I haven't forgot about the sugar. In fact, now would be a good time to go ahead and add the sugar. I could do it later, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now just to get that out the way. It also gives me a good opportunity to uh, take a hydrometer reading. So let me get that process ready. Now, in case anybody is wondering, wouldn't it be a good idea to add the sugar while everything was still on the stove nice and hot so the sugar could dissolve a whole lot more easily? Well, yeah, <laughs> it would have been. But since I didn't do it, it's never too late to add it. Let's go ahead and get that incorporated in there. Okay. Let's go ahead and put our cap on. And quite honestly, for the next 12 hours, let's go ahead and put it aside out of the way. Now, yeah, I'm probably gonna stir it up a bit more than that, just to make sure I got all that sugar dissolved, just to be on the safe side. But basically, that's it. So, back in 12, we'll go ahead and add our yeast and start the process of turning our juice into wine. All right, my first hydrometer reading came in at 1.042 which is a bit low for my taste. I wanted to get up to 1.080. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two additional cups of sugar. All right, now after the addition of two additional cups of sugar, I've got a hydrometer reading of, zoom this in, of 1.080, right where I want it, not bad. So I'll make the changes in the ingredients list to make sure we have four cups of sugar 
and you should be spot on. Okay, so enough time for the peptic enzyme. It's now time to go ahead and add our yeast. I'm going to do a couple of things. One, before I add the yeast, I want to go ahead and give our mixture a good stir. Good vigorous stir. I want to incorporate some additional oxygen in there to help the yeast out a bit. Mashing up some of these berries and bananas along the way. Now I'm going to add our quarter of a teaspoon of yeast. And normally I would just sprinkle it around, but because I got all these bags in the way, sprinkle it around as best I can. And normally that would be it, but rather than have all this yeast floating on top of the bags, I'm just going to go ahead and mix that in just a little bit. Again, at this stage, the more oxygen in your must, the better. I'm going to go ahead and put our cap on. By the way, this fermenter does have built-in airlock, so I don't have to worry about anything building up pressure and exploding. And all we need to do now is to put on a label, which I've got one prepared already. Basically, it's just going to be banana, strawberry, the date that I started making it, and the original gravity reading. And I'll put that on in just a few moments. Now, for the first three days, take this off again. For the first three, three days at least, you want to go in and give your musk a good vigorous stir. You want to give your yeast a little bit of a helping hand by putting in some more oxygen. After that, for the next next few days, you want to go ahead and make sure that uh, your fruit and your he's not just simply floating on top and choking off the air supply. So you just want to move it around just a little bit. Usually after five days, I don't do that. I will just simply leave it alone because after five days, five to seven days, you're ready to move that into secondary, at which point in time, oxygen in your musk is not your friend, <laughs> okay? So it's something you don't want to do. So, so there we go. Again, for the next three days, three to five days, go ahead and give it a vigorous stir. Uh, after your seven days, you're going to rack it into your secondary container, removing all of the fruit. And after that, every six weeks or so, you want to rack it again to get your wine off of the uh, dead leaves or dead yeast that's sitting on the bottom to prevent it from giving any off flavors. You do that until uh, a couple of times until your wine has gotten clear enough. Uh, usually about four or five months, it should start getting to be clear. Uh, the longer you keep it in secondary, the better. But once your wine does finally get clear, then it's ready for degassing if necessary and for uh, bottling, all of which I've done videos on. Well, I haven't done video on the degassing yet, but uh, the racking process and the, uh, the bottling process, all of, all of that I've covered in earlier videos, so you can go ahead and check those out. So again, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe button, help out becoming a member, uh, links, I'm an Amazon affiliate, so there will be links in the comment section if there's anything you want to just check out. And again, if there are any changes to the recipe, either, either now or six months from now when I do the six-month tasting, you'll find the changes in the ingredient sections uh, listed on the original video, which is this one. So again, see you at the next video. Now, in this video, I'm going to do a taste testing of a wine that I made 12 months prior. It's a banana strawberry wine. We're going to make this a very short taste testing. I'm either going to like it or I'm not. As simple as that. Now, a few quick things before I begin. One, uh, mm -hmm. as a result of the banana wine tasting that uh, I no no did uh, some time ago with a 12-month tasting of banana wine, it turned out that the banana wine wasn't quite done at 12 months. So we had scheduled another uh, tasting of that at the 16-month mark, which is coming up pretty quick. So I have my doubts about whether or not the banana portion of this wine is actually going to be done or not. But we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. Let's see, a couple of things. One, born two, or rather February 2021. 
Uh, ABB ended up at 12.08% and it's been pasteurized. Now, <clears throat> the last time I had a chance to taste this was at the bottling, that was several months ago. And usually when I do my tastings, it's in the process of doing the bag sweetening. And when I do bag sweetening, I usually use three ounce Dixie cups. And out of the three ounce Dixie cup, I usually use about a quarter or an eighth of an ounce down at the bottom to do the actual tasting to see if it's sweet enough. And then beyond that, it's bottle aging until it's ready to be done. So with that having been said, let's get right to it. Let's move this out the way. It's one of my good wine glasses, not my everyday stuff. So I don't want any accidents to happen. Let's see if I can get the cork out all in one go this time. I got my doubts. Let's see. Hey, I've done it. All right. Ah, be glad these are the last of those corks. All right, that having been said, uh, yes, the wine is mostly clear uh, during that last little bit of shaking. Apparently, there are a few particles of sediment that are apparently kicked up that I didn't see initially at the bottom, but beyond that, it's clear. Uh, I can't really tell much by that. Pour a small glass in case I don't like it. <laughs> All right. Hmm. On the nose, it smells sweet. You do get the banana. <laughs> banana. Yeah. You do get the banana, and you are getting a bit of the strawberry. And only at the very, very faint end, and you gotta like give a good inhale to catch the alcohol at the back end. So at 12.08%, uh, not too concerned about the alcohol being a major factor. Hmm. But on the nose, it smells good. But the nose isn't drinking it. Let's see what the mouth and the tongue have to say about this. That's actually kind of pleasant. I can see right now, I will have to make a slight adjustment in the original recipe on the original video, which you can find in the description section of the video, where I have the list of the ingredients. I probably will tone down the acidity a bit. Uh, whatever I had specified, whether it was a half a lemon or a quarter of a lemon, I'm going to cut that in half. And that should be just about right for this wine in terms of acidity. The strawberry gives it, at the back, just a very light tang. Apart from the acidity of the uh, lemon juice that was added, I think the strawberries alone imparted enough, I don't want to call it simulated acidity, but basically uh, that slight tartness that you get with eating strawberries, that actually comes through quite well. Could use just a tiny little bit more back sweetening. But because this is going to be a very short video, uh, I would probably say, well, I'm going to say this before I say that. Uh, this was one of those videos that I figured, okay, let me just get this one out the way. <laughs> okay, so I can free up five extra wine bottles, which I really don't need right now, but still. But having said that, uh, this is actually not bad. <laughs> this is actually not bad at all. Yeah, 
uh, again, a little bit more back sweetening and a little bit more time. Uh, I think this is pretty much falling in line with that banana uh, uh, wine that we made. I think banana requires just addi that additional time at 16 months, which is the next time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try one of these. I think this one will be quite ready. Uh, it's ready now. Uh, it is, what, going on 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time? My time. Uh, yeah, this will be finished by tonight. <laughs> uh, don't think I'll be pouring this one down the drain at all. So, yeah, what turned out to be just kind of like, uh, uh, I won't call it a gimmick because I do have some gimmick wines out there. That cranberry sauce wine, that applesauce wine. <laughs> Uh, that almond wine, which is actually beginning to clear up. Um, those were done pretty much as gimmicks, just to see what happens if we do it. But uh, no, that being the case, uh, this was one of those ones that I didn't have much much faith in, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Yeah, actually it ended up pre uh, pretty well. So again, a uh, very short video. If you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons. Uh, becoming a member helps. Becoming a Patreon helps. Also, there's plenty of merch available in the merchandise shelf below. So again, I'll see you in the next video.